Now many people want to practice Tantra without understanding how Tantra will take to their life across. Now Tantra path is not about not only about consuming alcohol, meat or narcotic substances. There is a, a large bundle of things which will happen in your life across. So once you understand this, then only it will be easy to practice the Tantra. First thing, place. If you practice Tantra, you cannot stay in your own place. You will have to migrate outside your state or your place of birth. Then only the Tantra Sadhana will take off across as a person. Now, if you see people in Kerala, Assam, West Bengal, normally they migrate out of their state very, very easily across as a person. So the first thing about the Tantra Sadhana is you will be an outside person. You cannot stay in your hometown. You cannot stay in your own place. You will have to leave your place and go, which is very, very important thing as far as the Tantra Sadhana is concerned. There is a particular sect which is called the Parabrajaka sect and they keep moving from different places every three days. They start moving across from one place to another. The second thing as far as the Tantra Sadhana is concerned, you will attract a very very powerful and a strong enemy in the Tantra Sadhana. Tantra Sadhana is a Bali Marga. You will have to give the Bali of the person or the Bali of your enemy. You cannot practice what you call it as a, a form of saying I don't have enemy, I don't want enmity, all that thing you cannot do it. In Tantra Sadhana it is like a sports, you do attract enemy into your life across automatically and you will have to win that enemy to grow into the next level of the Tantra Sadhana. Now this is very very confusing for many people because they think they don't need enemy. They will just see the deity and then they will vanish across. Wrong. All Puranas talk about the great avatars facing the enemy, winning the enemy and quelling the enemy and they move on to another level across as a person. For example, Kalika Purana talks about the Devi killing the Shumba Nishumba, the, uh, the Asuras, uh, that is why the entire thing is given. So the uh, Devi Mahatmyam really clearly talks about it. So if you are going to do sadhana of tantric in nature, you will attract the enemy very very easily across as a person. The enemy mostly will be greater than you, will be bigger than you. Now if you are not going to attract a physical enemy, then you are bound to attract a lot of astral enemies across. The astral enemies are the lower level spirits which can come and really disturb your rhythm, which can really come and disturb your day to day life across as a person. So you need to become very very clear about that you will be attracting the enemy. Tantra path is not a path of a dhana and many people think that it is a it is, there, is, there is something called the what you call you won't have enemy. No, that's why women who do the sadhana normally attract men, and men who do the sadhana normally attract women into their life across. And when only when you quell the enemy, you go into another dimension. The third point is in tantra sadhana, it is a lonely path. You cannot carry as a group. You cannot share it as a group. Tantra is a lonely path. The fourth most important thing is in Tantra Sadhana, it is not only a lonely path, but also you cannot teach this path to anyone. The understanding happens to you with the Medha Nadi. The Medha Nadi flows and the understanding happens to you. You cannot teach this path to people. It's not like you put a workshop and you teach them, you practice Tantra across. You can initiate them in the mantras or you will be given a mantra and you need to understand that it is a path which has to be done alone. As the Tantra Sadhana progresses itself, you will start encountering death, 
disease, difficult situation into your life. The more the situation is hostile, the more the Tantra Sadhana will be able to take off. The more the situation is very, very conducive, then the sadhana for the sattvic practices can easily take off. So in Tantra Sadhana, situation and conditions will be very, very hostile. Now, if you go to Himalayas, there are a lot of Tibetan monasteries which are very, very, what do you call, you can't get food, you can't get water easily. They, they, they tend to eat the meat of the buffaloes, which is normally not accepted across. So you have to understand that the Tantra Sadhana is a very, very hostile territory you can practice. That's why if you take the great yogi Milarepa, he practiced very easily in the hostile condition. The other point of it is it's a Gupta Sadhana. Gupta Sadhana means you don't go on explaining what experiences you are having, what you are doing across as a person. That you cannot explain in Tantra Sadhana. The other point is, some people, what happened, they start graduating from one Devata to another Devata to another Devata and ultimately they will reach the highest of the Devatas across. For example, there was a guy who was following pa Bala Tripura Sundari. Slowly he graduated to Navakshari, Sodasakshari and then from that he went into the 64 Bhairavas. From there he went into the Ashtamatrikas. Then he went into the Yogini Chakra. Then ultimately he went into the Bhairava form of worship. So these kind of evolution in the deities can happen and you might find it all the time confusing. So you need to take God as three things, the creator, the sustainer and the destructive part. Tantra is trying to understand God through this uh, destructive path across as a person. Now Tantra Sadhana does not distinguish between what is Sucha and uh, Suddha. For example, you can have sex and yet you can uh, go ahead and practice the Sadhana about it. But the very most important thing is you don't get into Nasha. Nasha means, you, you, for example, if you drink alcohol, you will become very tipsy, you will become very loose. But your mind should be very focused and the will should be very, very strong across as a person to use this sadhana. If your mind is not strong, you don't have a discipline, then it will be very difficult to practice. Most of the time when you practice tantra sadhana, there will not be so much of money which will be available or the right amount of money will come at the right time. That's all. You have to trust the process across. You cannot have a huge amount of money. The other uh, problem is Tantra is a path where sometimes or many times you will have to take the female as a guru. Now many people find it very difficult to take the female as a guru and in this case it becomes a lot more tougher for them to take the female as a guru. The other uh, point is you cannot be in the corporate world and yet try to practice this sadhana. The sadhana is a very tough sadhana so practicing in the corporate world will be very very difficult. You will have to give up and commit yourself into full time into practice of this sadhana which is very very important across as a person. The other point of it is you need to understand about the various upa sciences. For example, you need a knowledge of Ayurveda, astrology, all these things are required because Tantra Sadhana will tell you meditate in Ashtami, meditate in Navami. Like that you will be requiring a, a specific time period which will be required across as a person. So as such this is one of the most difficulty where people have with this because they are not able to understand the astrology and the time component of it which will be required in the Tantra Sadhana. And also you need to understand, you need to get the original text. For example, you are going to do the uh, Rudra Sadhana, then you have to get the Rudra Yamal Tantra to do it across. So therefore, this is a very, very tricky path. It is not suited for many people, though there is a lot of fascination about the Tantra Sadhana and the Tantra part and all that thing in the current era across as a person. You need to understand whether it suits you across, whether you are the chosen one. Many people in spiritual life do things which are not appropriate to them across as a person 
and they are not able to progress in their sadhana very deeply you need to understand that one man's food is another man's poison as far as the spiritual life is concerned you need to understand and accept that you might not be suited for tantra though it is uh, propagated outside in a major manner across for example many people who practice tantra get confused about the path of the advaita whether advaita is correct or not tantra sadhana talks about mantra maheshwar it says the moment you chant the devata's name itself the god is available so inherent there will be a certain contradiction you cannot practice the sadhana in a very tamasic in a satvic manner most of the time the tantra sadhana is practiced in a tamasic manner across as a person and therefore please understand i have given you a very clear insight which will be very very helpful to you with the sadhana thank you